You're still muted, Sandy, so. <laughs> All right, how's that? There we go. <laughs> okay, hello everybody. Um, I have to go back to the agenda because I don't have it sitting right in front of me, unfortunately. Can you put it on the um, screen? Raven? Allison, can you give me um, sharing capabilities? Yes, should be up now. Thank you. Allison. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. Um, I still don't have a, but here we go. I guess I have to uh, start the, the meeting by uh, saying this is the um, January 20th, uh, 2022 meeting of the uh, Parks and Rec Commission. And uh, in Larkspur, and I think we have to start with a roll call. Is that right, Allison? Yes, thank you. Commissioner Harrison? Here. Commissioner Keppel? Here. Commissioner Sunshine? Here. Chair Blauvelt? Here. And I'll note that Vice Chair Friedel is absent. Oh, okay, thank you. All right. Um, so next we'll have. Uh, then I'm just going to say there is public comment if anybody is here with a matter that's um, not on the agenda. Is there anybody in the audience with that? No? So I'm looking for any raised hands from our audience members and I'll ask uh, Franklin if he received any emailed comments. I don't think we received any comments, but let me double check. So. Oh, am I sharing my email now too? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm oh. Hi, Nick. No, there, there's there's no email comment. So let me go back right. to the agenda again. There we go. <laughs> okay. Um, then I'm looking for approval of the consent calendar from anybody, which includes the approval of the minutes of December 16th. Do I have anybody speaking up? Well, I'm not sure who is here. I think we're mostly all here. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, minutes. Good boy. Okay, great. I yeah. will second. Okay. And everybody's in favor? Aye. I'll okay. run through very quickly. Commissioner Harrison? Aye. Commissioner Keppel? Aye. Commissioner Sunshine? Aye. Chair Blavo? Aye. Okay, thank you. There is no public hearing. Our business items, um, we're actually going to move 5-2 to the, to, to the top of that. It's a change that um, uh, Rita wanted, I, I believe. Really. So, um, at the top, Rita. Okay. Um, good evening and happy new year to everybody. Good to see everybody. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and uh, I, I want to go ahead and present on the Nibbon Park Improvement Project, the much awaited uh, project. And we have um, um, Eric Kombeck, who is the um, is a private donor who will be uh, donating money for the playground portion of this project. So um, before I go into my um, presentation, I just wanted, we, we just, he'd like an opportunity just to meet everybody, um, you know, put, put a face to names and just talk about why he's doing this, why he and his wife Dana are doing this. So I think Eric, you probably are able to, uh, I think you're, you're mic'd up, so please go ahead. Yes, no, can everyone hear me? Yes, yes. yes. So look, it's a um, pleasure to meet all of you. And I'd like to thank all of you for your time. Um, I don't know how many of you know about my story, but my uh, son Alex was killed at Mark Day School uh, about two years ago. Um, and we used to live in Green Bray on Almanar. So just up the road from Molly Stones and the Marin Center and the park uh, that Rita has been so gracious uh, to offer to us as an opportunity to do in his honor 
uh, is a place we used to ride bikes with him. Like we used to ride bikes down to the Marina Country Mart um, with his two older brothers and his sister, Abigail. And so one thing my wife and I have really been focused on is we've started a non-for-profit organization uh, to promote school safety, um, you know, to honor his life. But another thing we want to do is just celebrate, you know, his spirit and his love of the outdoors. And so when we connected with Rita, oh, Rita, I want to say 12, 18 months ago, um, she's been just incredible at helping us find a way to honor Alex's spirit. And um, both of us are just overwhelmed by what an incredible design that her and April put forward. And we mostly want to let you know you have our full financial support because um, this is something that my wife and I really want to do to honor him. Um, and remember the seven years you know we had with him versus you know it help us really grieve right after losing him. So I don't know if there's any specific questions. I mean, just for full disclosure, we no longer live in Marin. Um, we both we moved back to San Francisco. It was just too hard for us to stay in the area. Uh, but it's a place that we want to do in honor of his name. Uh, and in addition to the um, first responders who tried to save his life at Kaiser. And so we were, I, I still struggle with the right way to put this, but I was incredibly overwhelmed by the humanity of the fire department who tried to save his life when the fence fell on him, uh, the police who spent so long investigating his death. And so part of this park is not only to honor his spirit, that's obviously the central theme of the playground, but one thing that would be important to us is also to put a kind of almost an area of reflection, right? Because when you spend time with some of these first responders, especially the police, you see how torn they are, right? To a complete stranger like myself, when they see someone go through such a travesty of losing a child. And part of what we want to do is honor, um, you know, really what they tried to do to save his life and just the intensity of their job on a day in and day out basis. Like I, I work in finance, my wife works in finance and what we do pales in comparison to what these people do every single day to try and save lives and keep people safe. And so that's part of the spirit um, of the design you'll see in the reflecting area. So I, I know that's a long intro, but I, I just thought I'd thank all of you in person. And if there's any questions, um, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Well, very moving story. Does anybody have any questions? And just a moment of Eric. You know, we've been kind of brought along a little bit by our, our wonderful Rita. Um, so I'm not sure that we do, but if somebody, anybody comes back, there's other ways we can reach you if we want to in, in the future, I should think. Okay. All and right. we could also open it up for questions after the presentation. We've looked at the, the pictures and whatnot. Okay, that's and a good things idea. Come up, so. Okay, great okay. idea. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, Allison, oh good, you've put, you've set me up so I can share. Okay, so um, so moving towards the speaking about the park. So you know, as you know, the 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 Niven Park Improvement Project is the entire park, not just the playground. Although the playground is the is the biggest um, portion of this. So just moving back to when we first when I first started in in 2020, or, or you know, this was just before COVID in February. Um, I did town hall, a couple of town hall meetings, and really the idea was information gathering, talking to the community. What is it that you'd like to see happen to this park? Um, I had some ideas and put up some storyboards, and um, people let me know what you know what they were interested in in seeing improvements for, and what they definitely were not interested in. And so, based on that feedback, um, I conducted a. Um, um, an online survey um, got a pretty good response rate. Um, I think it was 75 out of uh, maybe three, 200 um, invitations that were sent out. And, and basically just had, you know, really the idea was just, you know, here are a couple of areas, what would you most like to see? And so um, you can see in the staff report, the playground, enlarging the playground was the most popular choice. Um, improving the picnic area, which is the second, um, I'm actually going to bring up a, um, I'm just going to share this screen here. So um, you can see that the picnic area is up here. Can you guys see my, yes. can yeah, you see? We can see, that we can see your little hand moving around. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> okay. Um, so the, the, here's where the playground is. This is where the picnic area is. 
um, those two areas were the most um, um, uh, desired. There was another, I also had some information about adding some adult fitness equipment. Um, you know, it was a little bit, they were, they were just such strong, there were people that wanted it, but then there were real, there were people that just did not want it at all. It was very, very strong. So I just decided, you know what, this round, uh, at this point, I only had the measure a budget money to um, spend on this. So I thought, ah, you know, I'm just going to give that a pass and just focus on those two areas. The entrance area it is, is covered by another um, with the parks, park sign entrance um, CIP project. So it's, it's, it was a different budget. So I didn't, I didn't put that into the survey really. Um, so anyway, these are the, those are the areas that I chose to um, focus on. And so we did another, um, so then I, I then um, contracted with April Phillips, who Eric just mentioned, um, landscape architect and had her start on the pre preliminary uh, design concept. And I'll bring that up now. Um, and so she put together, um, Oh, I'm sorry, this is still, this is going into the playground. So she just did some, con she, she did some um, design concept drawings. And then, um, and then I did a second survey to say, okay, here's some images to look at. Is this what you, you know, how do these feel for you? Uh, again, I've got the, the feedback and um, the playground again, you know, the playground this time with, I showed, this is the concept that I showed for the playground. So Here's the here's the the round existing circle with a new play structure in it, a little bit of a um, uh, a family picnic gathering area, and then an additional nature play area. Um, and people responded well to this. They did they did like this quite a bit. Um, and again, you know, it was the, the majority of the people wanted something done. Um, and so after I did the survey, got these results, then um, that's when um, the Quambax came in to the picture and we started talking about um, where they could do something for, you know, to honor Alex. And, you know, I said, well, you know, I do have this playground project that I'm working on Niven. Would you like to take a look? And they said, yes, let's look at it. And they, they loved it. They loved the park, the, the location of the park, the sort of the, like he just spoke, the meaningful um, connection for them. And so um, we just went all in and get, again spoke, um, got to um, expanded the scope of the landscape architect and had her really design a, um, a, a more extended uh, version of, um, a, a design that incorporated um, a, a more a natural element to it. Um, are you able to see this? The, the this would be Exhibit Four. It has two two playground. Okay, so um, I sent this to the Quambex, and they liked the playground concept B. So it's moving a, a little. It's just it's taking that round um, playground. Uh, design and sort of just making it more of an organic shape, but you'll still see here's here's where the playground, um, the natural playground is. We still have this element of the family picnic area. So really, what it is is it's expanding over here on this right side, in, putting in landscaping, hardscaping that has a natural sort of a discovery zone feel to it. Um, he, you'll see here the natural play ideas. This is the type, Rita? the feel of what would be going into this area. Rita, it's still on attachment too, so we haven't yeah. moved to the next. Oh, I'm so though. sorry. Yeah, sorry, um, Rita, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Here I am, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. What do we see now? Um, nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> okay. The share stop, oh. so. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. Hold on. Hold on, I'm so sorry about this. Let me just get this one up. 
Everybody's having this issue with Zoom this week. <laughs> Technology. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, now are we seeing something? Now yes. we're seeing the playground images in attachment four. Okay, uh -huh. great. Now we're in the blueprint part. So okay, that. perfect. Okay, so you see the two playground concepts side by side, concept mm -hmm. A and B? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so this is where I had shown, I'd shared this with the Quambex. They, they liked concept B but, um, the, the most, it's the one on the right. So you can see it still has the basic idea of the, um, the play structure. The shape is a little bit more of organic um, feel to it. You've got this discovery, um, the nature play element down here. Um, and then right in this area is the family picnic area, which, which the residents really like, you know, because um, this whole entire area will be fenced. And so now you can have, you know, a little, you can have birthday parties here. You can um, meet with other parents and the kids can be playing. Uh, so it's just a nice, it's a nice, um, it's a nice feature. It's a nice amenity. So the main difference between what was, um, set, what was shown to the public in the, in the survey over the summer is basically this part here. This is um, more of a landscape, landscape hardscape uh, feature. And so that area will start to look like this. I've just gone to the next page and um, you know, more of this, um, you know, walkways, these vines, idea of more discovery, nature-based, not so much like play pieces, but really more. Um, just a nature-based um, amenities. Um, the landscaping is going to all be California native, drought tolerant, um, you know, po pollinators, hummingbirds. The, the hummingbird is a, is, is a special um, bird that has some meaning to the Quambex. So um, and, and luckily enough, or, you know, coincidentally, uh, butterflies and hummingbirds enjoy the same type of um, fauna. So this is wonderful. Um, and this is, this is what we're looking at. You know, this is sort of just a design concept, some ideas thrown together. And, and if, if you all like this, the direction we're going with this, then they'll develop these concepts more. And then lastly, um, this here is the reflective location. So as um, Eric mentioned, you know, the playground is going to be about, you know, kids playing and laughter and, you know, just a lot of, uh, acti you know, activity. Um, whereas these two areas here, the reflective zones, really will just be just cleaning up the area. If you're familiar with this area here, this is that picnic area that's just in the summertime, it's just full of very high weeds and, you know, eucalyptus tree droppings. So the Quambex would like to do something there. Um, basically, it'll just be cleaning it up, level, leveling it out a little bit, putting in some new uh, benches or tables or something so that people can sit quietly and, and enjoy the, the view of the creek. So that's the playground and the reflective zone. And then moving on to um, a couple of other areas. So this is the front entrance. And that would be right at Berry Way and um, uh, Drake's um, Drake's Landing Road. Uh, here's the sign, our our, our new uh, city standard sign would go in right it right up here. And then similar treatment with the with the plantings. It would all be California native, drought tolerant plants. Again, very low, very um, you know, being just mindful of the water water conservation um, requirements. And then the last uh, area of improvement will be the picnic area, which is directly across the fire station on Berry Way. Um, there's, you know, there's a picnic area there existing, just cleaning that up, putting in some new um, surfacing, um, changing up the, the configurations of the tables a little bit. Right now, there's just all the large, long picnic tables. And during the outreach, um, people mentioned that they would like to see um, just different kinds of, you know, uh, for cafe type tables, um, you know, maybe the tables don't need to be quite as long. They don't need to be eight feet, they can be six feet. And so just mixing it up a little bit. Um, the, some more additional shade trees, because uh, the sun does come in from this direction. So the shade trees will help 
help in the summer in the in the heat of the summer. Um, new um, drinking fountain with a dog bowl. So it'll just you know it, here's here's the existing pictures. So it'll just gussy it gussy it up a little bit and make it just make it attractive again. It's just it's long overdue. So that is the basic concept of um, the project and what we have in mind. And I would like to just um, turn it back to the commissioners for any comments or, um, you know, just an, a sense of if you feel like we're going in the right directions, any concerns, et cetera. Does anybody have any comments at this point? <clears throat> Okay, good. I, I do. Chair um, right. Blavel. Um, first, um, Mr. Kwambeck, um, I just want to uh, <clears throat> express my condolences on the tragic um, death of your of your son. And I think this is a wonderful way to uh, memorialize um, and remember you know, him. Um, and I think that I can speak for all of the commissioners that we appreciate you stepping up and and <clears throat> wanting to fund. A portion of this project. Thank um, you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, in, in terms of the, the well, the, the bigger picture, we, we did this uh, reach outreach to the to the community, um, came up with these four different I concepts, and I was just wondering, you know, I see that you know the the the, the focus here is is on the new playground and the uh, and development of a uh, of the picnic area. Um, I, I take it there, there was just probably a, a, a lack of, of funding to, uh, to consider the um, exercise equipment. Is that something we could do in the future? Because um, it looks like we have nothing in terms of that. You know, I, I know that we can't do everything, but is that something we, can, we could uh, consider for future um, development of the park? Rita? Yeah, you know, there was, there was such vocal opposition to it that I dropped it. Mm -hmm. uh, there was concerns about um, what what I was hearing from what I was hearing from the residents is that there are a lot of just even without any equipment per se, there are a lot of um, you know like kind of like those boot camp trainer type folks that come to the come to the park early in the morning, you know, seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning, they've got a group of, you know, 10, 12 people and they're doing, you know, they're exercising and it's noisy. And um, I don't know, I just, I, they're just, just the, really just trying to be um, mindful of the people that, you know, that, that face the, you know, that look onto the, the, uh, the park. Um, just the no the way the noise carries in that area, I just it it seemed to me like it was something that was not a good idea, and um, I just felt like it was not the right thing to do there. Okay. Um, if I was going to do any kind of equipment um, adult exercise, it really should be over at Piper. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I appreciate uh, that explanation, um, and. I if, if it's not a good idea that I don't think we should pr pursue it. Um, in, in regards to the... Uh, oh, and I'm sorry, one more, if I could just go back one more thing. The, the, other, the other thing that I really heard loud and clear from that neighborhood was that they really like the more passive nature of Niven Park. So the idea of adding something that's a very active element just didn't feel good to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, again, I appreciate that. Um, looking at the playground, these, these two different concepts, um, my, my feedback would be that I, 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 I like the more organic feel of the meandering pathway for the con, uh, concept plan B. Um, I noticed also in that plan, there's an additional bench towards the bottom, um, whereas the plan A doesn't have that bench. And I, I, I think you know, having more benches is always a good thing, you know, so, you know, people who don't want to, you know, want, want to enjoy the, the, the playground, but want, don't want to be around a lot of other people. I think it's great that you have that one bench sort of by, uh, by itself. Um, I noticed that the, the, 
one thing, the, um, the concept plan A includes a habitat garden where plan B does not, um, or is, is that just, it was, was that, because it, it kind of looks like there's a habitat garden in there in plan B, but I just didn't see a, a, a label for that. Um, can, so if you could just tell, you know, explain um, whether it is just a inadvertent omission of the habitat garden into plan B, um, and, and, if, and if it is, has, if it has been eliminated, um, can you just talk briefly about um, why was that just a, a matter of space? Yeah, I think it just wasn't labeled as such. I mean, really, really, these are just um, concept drawings. Um, it's going to, I mean, pretty much the, what the habitat garden means is just landscaping that is suitable for, um, you know, birds and bees and um, natural, uh, natural California habitat. So it, it's not labeled, but you, you can see that, you know, that's what I thought it's, it's yeah, there, yeah. but it's not labeled. Anymore. I mean, pretty much everything is the same. I mean, there actually is another bench, even on plan, plan, um, a it's over, you can't quite see it, but it's over, it looks where it says clump cl climbing stumps for balance where that circle is. There's actually a, a bench right there. There's really not much different. Um, there's nothing new added to either, uh, everything is pretty much the same. It's just really the configuration. The what, configuration. what plan B allows is because it's a slightly larger playground space, um, it allows for a slightly larger structure. Not huge, but just slightly. You can just, you can, you have a little bit more flexibility on, on the way you can, uh, you know, the types of structure you can put in. There's more room for slides or nets or something like that. Okay. I mean, I'd say that overall, uh, it's 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 very evident that a lot of thought and effort has gone into these plans. Um, so I I appreciate all the effort that that you and um, the the design team have put into this. Yeah, thank you. Other comments? Other thoughts? Well, I'd like to say um, I think this is a wonderful addition. I hope you can be very proud. I know you'll be very proud of it, but was the effort that um, that uh, uh, has been put into it, both the design team and from our Rita and you, um, um, Mr. Klumbach, Eric is, it is, right? Um, I hope that, um, I, I hope it's a lot, just draw in lots of hummingbirds and, 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 and uh, bees and things that your son just loved, I know. And, yeah. He's, he's zooming. Thank you so much for, for being a part of all this. Painful, I know, but it will be lovely, I'm sure. No, I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys giving me an audience as well. So thank you very much. Well, well we're pleased to, and proud to meet you. <laughs> Is there um, anybody else who has a comment at this point or shall we move on? Okay, I think we will move on then. And um, Rita, you're going to go on with other things in the parks, is that right? So Eric can leave if he wants to, or is there something? Yeah, we're gonna, if, yeah if, we're, if we're wrapped up with this, Eric, you're welcome to stay, but we're gonna be moving on to park rules, which is not the most scintillating thing. And I'm sure you've got I will. something I will on Netflix no to watch. So. <laughs> I'll put my daughter to bed instead. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> okay, you thank, you. Thank, you. Bye -bye. thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Okay. Um, that was very nice of us to have an opportunity to meet him. Yeah. We're arranging yeah. that. Exactly. Um, if I may, um, just, I, I don't want to put Commissioner Harrison on, on, the, on the spot, but I, I know you live by Niven. Did you have any comments or did you? Yeah, let me, let me apologize. Uh, Apparently, I keep getting kicked off my own Wi-Fi, okay. and so I, I keep going off, and then I'm trying to get back on, and so I, I didn't want to say anything because I, I wasn't aware of how the conversation had gone as it related to um, Niven, okay. um, but I, I, I think it's spectacular. Okay. I think it, it's, it's more than I think anybody could possibly have imagined when we first started um, receiving um, public comment. Uh, the only thing that I missed, and I would, I assume I missed um, looking at some of your notes, is in the summer, the park gets really, really hot because there are not trees. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I know there's, we planted some trees there two years ago and, you know, they're trying to get started, but they're not going to provide shade anytime in the next five years or so. So I missed what you had said about shade and shade trees, but I would, I just think this park is going to be, and the play area is going to be so wonderful. Kids are going to want to be there. And if it's really hot, it, you just, you can't do it. Right. So, um, there are, yes, yeah, so there are, um, there are shade, there is shade. Um, can we see my screen again? There it is. Yeah. Okay. So if we look, so if we look over here on the, on the playground, anything that's in circles, you, you, these are trees, new trees ah. going in. And then there is this um, one, she has it listed as an oak, big story tree. So um, obviously that will take a little while for that to grow, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, there, you know, it, Rome wasn't built in a day, so. Yeah, no, I think it, I, I think yeah. it is, is it, it's a beautiful rendition and okay. um, it will yeah. be a, an incredible asset. And then over here, um, a couple of, well, actually the, that's the, here, right here in the, um, in the picnic area. So these three trees yeah. are new. Um, we, most of the trees are here right now. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, again, the, the sun kind of comes. Sun comes that way, yeah. Yeah, so these will shade this area here, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there are there there are trees. No, I, I think it's great, and and thank you very much for all the hard work you've you've put into this. And um, I do apologize that my Wi-Fi doesn't like me. Too. Oh no no no! I just yeah I I just really wanted to hear from you just because I, this I know this has been you know it's your neighborhood and it's you you get a lot of questions about it so and and it will it will really get used. Um, oh yeah. You know, uh, the one thing that COVID did is people discovered this pathway out here, this multi-use pathway, and I think they discovered Niven and the picnic tables, and um, people are really enjoying it. And I think nice. when you have an upgraded tot area or a children's play area, it, it's it's just right. going to make it that much nicer for families. And I will say the one thing that really that's you know this playground, you know, even though the structure itself might be for two to fives, you know, the the sort of the um, you know, the thing with like gravel play and, you know, that that's, that's any age. And then the whole discovery zone with all the landscaping and, you know, things to look at. I mean, it, it'll be fun for kids of all ages and adults. So um, I, you know, it's, it, it really does serve the community in a much bigger way. So um, pretty excited about that. So I guess if you could just go ahead and give me your, um, Approval for me to continue with the next, you know, just refining the design. If you're, if we're, if we're good with the overall concept and the direction that it's going, that would be fantastic, and we can wrap up this agenda item. Do we need uh, Chair, Chair Blavel, I had one question. Yes, go ahead. Um, and this is for Rita. Uh, just what what's the timing on this? Can you just the timing? Sure, of Let course. Let us know what the next stages are. Yeah, so the next stage is, um, uh, you know, the co um, any comments that I would have gotten from you and then also just the feedback from the Quambex. I, and then um, I will then give this to the landscape architects and then they will, um, we have to, there's a couple of um, like a like a topographic survey and couple couple engineering kind of um, uh, information, um, baseline information that is needed. And then they'll start to refine the concept, um, you know, start identifying like what, what play structure exactly are we looking at, you know, not, not just sort of conceptual stuff, which what, how, do, how, do the, how does that natural habitat look? So that, that design refinement will be the next phase. Um, and then once that is approved, then they'll go into construction drawings and then the drawings then become something that's biddable. Um, you know, you can send it out to contractors. So you know, probably the fall, winter. For bidding, bidding out the, the project? Oh, bidding out the project, I, I hope to have that by fall, by late, okay. late summer, maybe even, depending on how quickly it all goes. Yeah. So anyway. perhaps a year, a year and a half? Oh, not, not near that long, not near that long. Oh. Yeah, no, I mean, I'd, I'd like to have it, um, I'd like the construction to start in the fall. Great. Yeah, that's fantastic. Great. Yeah, well, that's that would be you know the 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 main the draw the the lead time is the um the equipment um uh, 
-hmm. That's always um, the thing that takes the longest. And with all the supply chain stuff that they're talking about, it's, yeah. you know, we'll see how, we'll see where, where that's happening, but that would be the, like to have it done by the end of the year. Good job. Wow. Thank yeah. you. And in the meantime, uh, in the meantime, the, like the landscape in the front can start happening. You know, the the um, the picnic area could, could start happening. Um, so people will start to see things um, moving along. Okay, as, as Vicki said, splendid. It's absolutely splendid. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that really sums, uh, sums it up. Thank you so much, Rita. I don't know what person- I think Mike had his hand up. Yeah, Chair Blava, uh, can I have one uh, follow-up yeah. question? Uh, Rita, um, in, in your uh, staff report, I'm just going to read one sentence from uh, the bottom of page two. It says, given the robust construction bidding environment and, and rise in material costs, staff would appreciate giving, receiving input regarding priorities the PRC commissioners ha may have, uh, and then regarding the scope and budget, in, in, right. if the scope and budget get out of balance. Um, do you... It, could you speak to that a little bit more? Do you envision? I mean, have, have we come? I mean, it's, it's a beautiful concept. Right. Are we, are we going to be able to afford this? Well, yes. <laughs> so when I wrote the staff report, that was last week. And so since then, I've had a conversation with the with the um, Quambex and just to make sure that we're not, you know, designing something that's not financially feasible for them. And he let me know that just based on this design and I kind of through a number, you know, just just a ballpark, super super approximation, and and he said that's fine. So it's um, pretty much they will they will fund that entire playground project, and um, so you know, I, there was a point where I thought perhaps I might need to use some of the money for like you know, like say like the the topographic study or some of the the um, professional design fees, but. Um, that is not the case. They'll go ahead and take care of that. So pretty much er the measure A fund um, that's been allocated for this project will go towards the landscape area and the picnic area. Um, and it may not even need all that. So yeah. well, that's great news. Yeah. So really is. Yeah. yeah. They, it, this is a huge gift to the city. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And the gift from his heart. I mean, I think that yeah. was. Oh, that. yeah. I mean, the thing, I mean, it really is. Um, it's such a, it's, it, it's such a healing thing for them. It's been such a healing thing for them. Um, the way that, uh, I think, I, I don't know if I mentioned it last time, but the way that um, Dana, his wife, explained it to me was, you know, everything about the accident and the school and the, the lawsuit that followed, you know, that all focused on his death. This focuses on who he was, you know, when he was alive. And I think for them, this has been just a really wonderful way to honor his, his life, you know, his short little life. Um, yeah, so it's just been a really, um, it's been really a meaningful project. It's, it's been, just, just up until this point, you know, everything we've done, you know, they started at Hamilton and now we've moved over here. And actually the move to Niven has made it even better because this now the playground can really be just this crown jewel, you know, in Niven. It's just, um, it's, it's really exciting. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. Um, one thing, is there going to be any, any um, acknowledgement about the boy or any... Yes. Yes. So next, I, I didn't, I was, I didn't want to do it this month because we already, we, we have this park rules yes. thing that we're doing, but next month I'll be um, presenting. Um, I'd, I'd like to get some, I'd like to start the process of, of um, establishing guidelines on, on naming policies for parks and for facilities with, within parks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just something that we don't have right now. And, you know, certainly the Quambex, once, once this is done, um, you know, they're going to probably want to name the garden, you know, Alex's garden or something like that. Yeah. And so, um, and then we also have that other, the other donor for Dolliver Park. So I think this is a good time for us to establish, establish some policies some formalized policies about that. Um, so, but yes, they will, they will, um, you know, will we'll want to do something yeah. that has his name or his, yes, yeah. plaque or... Yeah. Well, you'll be back with that concept of 
naming. Okay. Yeah, I'll be back next month. <laughs> I can't see enough of you. Anybody else have any questions? No. Okay. I'll just say that uh, I hope if, if, if and when we have some type of uh, you know, ribbon cutting ceremony, um, when this project is, 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 has been completed, that we can shine some light on the uh, generosity of the Quanbeck family. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> So in Rita, right now, you're looking for a motion from the commission to approve your, to move forward, correct? Yes. Okay, can I have a formal motion, I guess, huh? All right, anybody want to make the motion? Also, quiet. How about you, Vicki? Um, I will move that um, we move forward with uh, the project as um, outlined here. Um, okay, Tell me a second. I'll second. Okay, and all in favor? Aye. Um, aye. And anybody objecting? No. Okay, we got it. Thank you. Aye, wonderful. That was a wonderful presentation too. Very it nice. Thoughtfully done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. what do we do next? We go on some two other things for you, right? Um, so I'm actually gonna um, I'm gonna have Nick present on this one because. Um, it's um, it's really it's more park usage and um, he you know he's he's sort of the boots on the ground guy and has to uh, has to deal with the public you know just work with the public on these different issues so go ahead Nick I'd like to say have everybody uh, also understand that Nick is um, has a new position as of last night well that's right? in my director's report guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> take, I don't want to take your thunder away. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, so Rita was nice enough to put um, this together for for us. Um, we we have actually been talking about this for uh, for about two years. We were hoping to do this in 2020, and then everything happened. Um, so what we're <laughs> looking to do. Is make the Piper Park picnic area um, a little bit easier to, to, to manage. Um, what we have on nights and weekends um, is can sometimes it's a wonderful experience and other times it can be uh, kind of crazy out there. And um, some of the big things we have is we'll have um, people make reservations for their kid's birthday party or, or a family gathering out at the park and they'll rent a grouping of tables. And then um, They'll have their tables. They'll have a wonderful view of the, the picnic or the, um, the playground there. And then another group will come in with event tents, bounce houses, tables, chairs, and they will, and they will set up in the grass right next to them. Um, maybe usually right in between them and the playground. Um, and so what that, it sometimes leads to uh, confrontations out at the park. Um, and it's very unclear for, for the, you know, we usually don't have police respond to it, but it's the, the rules have just not been very clear um, as, as to what people's rights are out there. So we're really looking to cut down on, on that kind of um, behavior. Um, and we don't know who is coming out to have these parties. There's um, seen pictures of mechanical bulls out there, um, parties with, with a couple hundred people and tables and chairs on the grass um, and live music, there's been DJs, um, and then other <laughs> completely quiet. Um, so we're really trying to get a handle on that. And um, we've adjusted the rules to kind of um, put an end to that. Hopefully put an end to that and I can pull that up now. Okay. So Rita and I put these rules together. Can you all see that? Yes. Can you all see it? Yeah, okay. You should have a copy as well. But what we're the main changes that we're looking to do here um, is the designated areas here, where we're basically not allowing people to come in with event tents larger than 10 by 10 uh, tables and chairs and set up in grass areas. We're trying to to save the grass there. This, this last summer was really rough on the grass and, and I'm surprised that it actually survived. 
but um, but it did. Um, but it just gets a lot of traffic there. And really, the the picnic areas are, are decomposed granite uh, dirt out there, and that's really meant to handle the traffic of all the um, all the picnics that are happening out there. <clears throat> and so we are trying to keep people to those. We also don't want to, you know, ban people from having um, having, you know, essentially a free gathering out there where, you know, we don't, we have fair fees that we have set up, but um, we're trying to discourage very large parties where people are spending hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars, but, um, but the city gets none of it. So, um, so we're, we're trying to limit gatherings. Um, so any, anybody that has a gathering over 25 should really get a permit for that, um, as well as any event tents. Um, you know, people have their pop-up tents that they need for shade, and and, and we're we're good with that. It's just the big, um, you know, 12 foot, uh, 12 foot or 30 foot long, 12 foot high that kind of um, impedes everybody's view. That's that's difficult. Uh, another thing that we see a lot of out there is people are bringing their own barbecues and they're setting them up under a tree, um, you know, in the grass area. And it's a, it's a major um, danger. So what we're trying to do is keep people in the, the barbecue, the assigned barbecue pits that we have out there. Um, most of this stuff is, is actually very similar um, to what we have. We do allow two bounce houses um, out there and you have to be permitted for that. And we have banned large inflatable adult games, mechanical bowls, um, and dunk tanks. And so there's actually a, a ban on that now as opposed to us dissuading people from doing that. Good. Uh, one, of the, one of the main changes, or what, that, those are the main changes, and the other small change that we have in here that we've um, been hearing from maintenance about is um, we are trying to get rid of confetti and glitter um, from pinatas. Um, most of Kenyatta sometimes are gender reveal parties, um, but what's happening is the glitter's out on the grass, it's all over the dirt, and our crew can just not clean it up. There's no easy way to clean that up. Uh, trash, you know, they can they can rake up lots of little pieces of trash and, and, and do that, but the glitter and confetti just kind of stays there um, until it until it sinks into the dirt. So that's that's one of the changes that we're looking to um, to do as well. And so um, we kind of want feedback from from you guys on on if this was you know all sounded good. We're we're trying to be fair to everybody, um, both to people that are reserving the park and to people that just want to come and have a picnic without without having to to get a permit. Hmm. Is everybody taking this in? Do we have comments at this point? Hmm. It's interesting. Air Blanda, may I? Yes, please. Um, well, I'd say that it's generally speaking, it's it's unfortunate that that you 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 know we have to go this route, but it's understandable uh, given the situation. Um, I just have a couple small little comments. Um, just wordsmith a little bit here. Um, under the designated areas of uh, the, the third bullet point, um, use of canopies or events uh, may only be set up inside the defined picnic areas and may only be, be 10, 10 feet by 10 feet. I would just change that to or smaller rather than or less. Um, the next bullet point down, <clears throat> canopies and tents larger than 10 by 10 are prohibited unless prior approval and a use permit and then the, if you wanted to go ahead and change has to have, since that's uh, there's two things re being required, so that's, that should be a plural. So just change has to have. These are very minor Great, things. Um, but one thing that um, on more of a, a major uh, comment, I guess I'd say, um, towards the top, the table uses and reservations, I think that the fourth bullet point needs to be rewritten and uh, I think you need stronger language. Um, this is the one that says reservation holders will have priority use, of, will have priority of use and can require those without a reservation to relocate to other unreserved tables. Um, I think you should use some stronger language than that. Um, 
uh, if as a suggestion I wrote down um, members of the public who do not have table reservations shall not use the tables that have been reserved. I, I just don't like the can require those. It's it, it's yeah. it's almost like saying, "Hey, I'm you know it, we're, we're we're giving them the the opportunity to go ahead and use those tables." Hey, but you might be moved, and I I would think that you're better off just saying from the get go, if there's a reservation in place, don't use the table. So that's that's yeah. my um, so that that's the I think that's a little bit meatier. So that, and and that's the extent of my comments. Great, thank you. Okay, anybody else? Seems a shame that we have, you know, that, that we have troubles. Uh, and these people that do these, uh, what'd you call them? The, the, they're on a bull or something? What was that? <laughs> oh, we had one uh, a few years ago. There's a mechanical bull out there, yeah. Oh my goodness. Sweet little Lurkspur. Um, okay. Anybody else have some thoughts at this point? We can we can always go back and review them, or you can bring them to us if we have their problems, right? If you have more problems or something. Well, yeah. Although a big reason this happened too is because we weren't doing reservations during COVID. We had That's more right. and more complaints from the public. That's the right. People using, and this is what brought back to me and Rita to Nick to discuss because we we're trying to resolve some of the issues that when the police did come out to enforce stuff. You know, it was hard for them to point to something to say, here are the rules. And so that was one reason we wanted to get the rules. Got it. That makes well. a lot of sense. Okay, got it. Anything else, guys? You know, I agree with uh, uh, Commissioner Kokel's comments um, regarding the table usage and reservations. I do think as clear as we can possibly be for folks. And then I'm really not that familiar with how this setup is, but is there a reasonable way that if I show up and I know that there's a that that I'm not going to a reserve table? Way to what? Is there a reasonable way to what? To know. So if I show up in the morning and I just want to have a picnic, um, and <laughs> I see a table sitting over here and I set up, and then somebody comes and tells me it's reserved. Is there a way that I should have been aware that that table was reserved and not available for drop-in use? Good point. Yes, yeah. They, uh, there's a bulletin board at the entrance to the park that has um, reservations for the weekend, and they're they're posted there on the Friday beforehand. And are people but, aware of it? Are people? I'm sorry. Sure? Are people aware of it? I think she's trying to make. Yeah, sure my concern is my concern is I I don't look at the bulletin board. I just think it's first come first serve for the for the picnic tables. Right. It worries yeah, me right. that we may have a number of people who are not trying to be rule breakers, but just legitimately get there and, and think that they can set up at a picnic table. And then when they're told they have to leave, they're gonna be irritated. Yeah. If, if I could just uh, add a comment, <clears throat> uh, I'm in agreement. Uh, I, I have seen some other parks where uh, there's some type of uh, notification on, on each table if there's a reservation for that table. Uh, I don't know if you have the, the staffing to do something like that, but that would be a way of clearly indicating that hey, uh, that that table's taken because there's you know there's there's something on there, you know table number, date, whatever it is that says this one's being taken. And I think that would be a way of, if you have the ability to get out there, to put those types of notifications on the particular tables. That might be a, a good way of um, reducing the conflict. Yeah, we have, uh, we've discussed that option, um, but that would, that would require us to be sending staff out multiple times a day to do the, do the changes in between um, to mark those individual tables, um, which I'd love to do, but, uh, but staffing would be, would be quite the challenge on the weekends. Um, and so, yeah, right now the, the reservations are up on the bulletin board. Um, that's kind of the first thing you see when you walk into the picnic area there. Um, and so I think we, Rita and I have talked about putting up some more signs in the park uh, that, that refer people to the, to the bulletin board um, at the entrance, um, as well as um, adding a few of the um, key rules that we're looking to enforce um, out there. 
Yeah, right now there's just no signs really anywhere except and barely even anything on the message board. So the idea would be, you know, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, signage, like maybe something on each table that says, you know, check message board, Yeah. you know, to make sure, you know, something to the effect, you know, check the board to make sure this table is not reserved before you set up. And then, and then actually having signs, um, you know, it uh, around each, there's like, a, what is it, five, five picnic groups, um, table groupings, you know, five, six, something like that. Again, you know, another sign with, with sort of um, taking the, the rules and really condensing, you know, getting the most important ones, like, you know, no barbecues, <laughs> except in the barbecue area and, you know, what, like that. Um, and that way, what, what we were getting um, commentary from the police is that, you know, if there is a sign there, rather than saying like, well, it's in the Muni code, you know, it's better if there is a posted sign and then, the, you know, if there is an issue, then the police can go and say, well, here's the sign right here, here's the code, and you're in violation. So really, there's more signage. I think we can, we probably can go back and, and brainstorm some ideas for a way to put some signage on the tables that would make yeah. it easier for people to, to check to see what the reservations, especially yeah. if we start, to, uh, we we're hoping to start the automated reservation system, right, Nick, where people would make reservations online and getting that system in place might help us find a way of saying, here's a code on the table, you look the code up and it says, it's reserved for this time and this time of day. So I think we can go back and brainstorm and figure out some ways to make it easier for the public, so. That's great. Okay. Any other thoughts? Not really. Okay. Any anything else you want to point out to us, on Nick, that we've been missing? No. Uh, so you've been getting along okay. Uh, the, the police have entered into these conversations. It's sounding like to me, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Rare occasion. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, everybody, is there anything else you want to ask about on these rules? No? No. Okay, thank you so much for putting so much thought into it. And you can come, you'll be coming back, as, as Franklin said. Um, well, do, do we want to approve these current rules? And then, like I said, we'll bring back the solution for the tables. But if we. Do we need a motion then? Okay, we have motions on everything these days. All right, somebody want to make a motion? to approve these rules that Nick has presented us with for the picnic area. Okay. Uh, I can go ahead and uh, make a motion that we recommend the uh, adoption of the proposed rules and regulations for the Piper Park picnic area um, um, that, that include the, the comments made by the commissioners tonight. That sounds good. Second? I'll second that motion. There you go. Okay. Do we need a roll call then, um, Allison, or no? Yes, it's always good to take a roll call while we're meeting by Zoom. All right, go ahead. Would you, Commissioner meet? Harrison? Uh, yes, aye. Commissioner Keppel? Aye. Commissioner Sunshine? Aye. Chair Blavo? Aye. Thank you. We're getting so formal. Okay. Um, <laughs> so this is great. Thank you so much, Nick. And everybody. All right. What? What? I've lost track of what we're supposed to be doing next. We're done with uh, well, whoop, business site, Niven Park improvement. Done that. And this is where Rita can give us an update on all the other park <laughs> she's working on. So. <laughs> okay, Rita. Okay. Um, poor, poor lady. <laughs> Franklin, can you? Uh, I wanted to share something on the screen. There we go. I think you're okay. Okay, uh, so I just wanted to share. So we've talked about Niven, that's a current project. I talked about Dolliver, uh, was it the last time or two times ago? So that's still in development. Um, what else? Um, the only other project that I'm currently working on is, um, well, this is what the update. So it's the Piper Park picnic area update. So I will go ahead and share, I just did a, just have some um, images to share with you. <clears throat> uh, so um, do we see my PowerPoint? 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, it's, it's just you haven't started the slideshow yet. So. There we go. There okay. we go. <clears throat> okay, so just an update on the project. Um, here's the current status as of today. You remember this graphic. Here's the picnic area. So anything in the everything in the yellow circles are complete. So the um, the the there's two shade sails that went in. Uh, this has a shade sail, but what I'm trying to show here is actually the concrete stage underneath this shade sail that went in the ADA pathway, and then we have 11 new trees in the park. Great. Here was the concept for the shade sails, and um, sorry, and then this here it is. <laughs> so we have two shade sails in. This is the smaller size. This is the size that's right next to the, the grouping of tables that's next to the playground. And then this is the one that's um, on the other, more, more on the um, by the soccer field side. The next item was the stage. This was the concept that was given. And here's the after. So here's our path a nice platform for musical events, um, outdoor learning, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, trees, we had a lot of trees that were identified. So this, um, these two here are the Western redbud and then two different types of oak trees. And here are the trees in installed. So this is the wet Western redbud. This is, this is one of the oak trees. Here's a couple of others. You can see the water bags on there. Um, they're pretty large. They're actually about um, seven to eight feet tall. So, um, you know, they're going to do nicely. They, they, they've got, they got put in um, and now we've had all this great rain. So they should be develop, developing their root systems. And then with the rest, Western redbud, we did, we, we, um, I just wanted to show you that we, I, I know most, I think all of you donated money to uh, plant these two trees and, and we did that in honor of Dick who, Dick Whitley, who retired at the end of last year. So, and then um, future status. So these, this is the only thing that's left for this project are these two sh shade sails. And with the prop, um, Prop 68 um, grant monies, um, I, I can go ahead and finish these up this year as well. So then we'll have lots of shade sales, new trees, and this project will be complete. Wonderful. So that is, so thank you for your support. And um, yeah, we're moving along, clicking off these projects. I had a friend who, who said to me, what are those poles doing in the, in the park? <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. finally he wrote back and he said, oh, I see the shade. It's lovely. He got yeah. there great. He'd never seen one of those before. So yeah. Yeah. They have to put up the posts and then they actually measure it and then they fabricate yeah. the sails. So yeah. it just got finished uh, yesterday. So just in time for the meeting. <laughs> great. Thank you. That is the end of my update. And Rita is always fast when she gets her projects going. So that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> all right. Nice. <laughs> Anybody well, have any thoughts or questions, or we can always call her back. We like to see her. <laughs> well, I just like to say, Rita, you're such an inspiration. I mean, you just are always so positive. And thinking, you really are, and thinking, mm -hmm. you know, how can it best serve the public and what do we need? And I, I just am always amazed with you. Thank Appreciate you. it. We're lucky you don't go anywhere. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good. Good. Okay. All right. All right, Franklin, tossing the ball back to you. Thanks, Rita. So, so the next item is um, it's that time of year where you guys get to elect a new chair and vice chair oh good 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 <laughs> great so let's see how do we go about this i guess we've in the past it's been just a turnover kind of a thing right yeah i think that or you can nominate right. and since since um i think right now our vice chair is not here but if we do tradition um gene fidel would become the chair right 
Right. So, and then we got who who wants to be on the vice chair? <laughs> well, is there a, a where are we on on that rotation sort of thing? I'm I'm not sure because when I started, it, um, Vicky was the um chair, and then you were vice chair last time, right? And then you became chair, and then Jean. Became, so I'm not sure whose turn is it. Is it yours, Mike, or is it yours, Elizabeth? <laughs> I thought it might have been Elizabeth's turn, but uh, I was going to say I can't think of anything I'd enjoy more than being Jean Fridell's like vice chair. Okay, you want to be vice chair? Good, good. Okay, then shall we have a, somebody make those nominations? Jeannie and Elizabeth. I'd like to make a motion that uh, we we uh, we have a vote to elect. Uh, Vice Commissioner Friedel as the new commissioner, and uh, uh, and that Elizabeth Sunshine be the vice chair. I'll okay. second that. Great, and okay, we're going to have a roll call, aren't we? Yes, yeah. thank you, Commissioner Harrison. Aye. Commissioner Keppel. Aye. Commissioner Sunshine. Aye. Chair Blavel. Aye. Good. Well done. That'll be who's gonna break that to Jeannie. <laughs> yeah, I'll let her know. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That'll be a good team next year. Great. Okay, what next? Okay, Good. so next up is my report. So um, so as Sydney almost said, so we last night's um city council meeting, we uh, have begun some of our reorganization in the community services department. And um, Nick Stone will now be my assistant community services director. So he'll be promoted to that position. Um, he'll help me out uh, a lot more, but he also has a lot more um, autonomy and will oversee the recreation department. So it gives us a little more um, focus. And I know I'm really excited because Nick does have a lot of great ideas. And I'm looking forward to all the great things he does. But this puts him in a position where he doesn't need to to be asking all sorts of stuff. He's, he's got freedom, lots of freedom now, Nick. So, so and it's also a really help for me because, you know, he, we, we, I keep getting tugged in both places. And it's like this, making him an assistant director, I can sort of drag him over here to the library side where it wasn't as easy to do before, but we're sort of blending the, the departments a little better. We still are in the process of hiring a community service assistant. We're getting close to the interviews. Um, we've had six um, candidates who have applied for the job. So we'll hopefully, get that filled by the end of February, fingers crossed, <laughs> um, because we need to get that help on board. Um, we're also starting to plan for, um, we were planning for the, the Easter egg hunt and we're still not 100% sure, but we just wanna see where the COVID um, guidelines and stuff happens. But we're, 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 re we're excited to do it, but we know we may have to pause it, but we're also starting to plan for summer, super cool summer school, um, and then other programs Nick has lined up to do Correct <laughs> me. Um, so we're, we're just hoping if the COVID stuff has really just been the biggest hit for us. It's like not being able to do a lot of the things we do. And I know a lot of our, um, I was talking to this superintendent this morning at the school and the principal of Hall, and they're really eager to, to get our after school programs up and going again. So um, we're just hoping that that stuff will we'll ease up, but we also need to get the staff on board because like I've said for months and months now, Nick needs help. Um, we need to make sure that we can clear some of his plate. So he's not doing a lot of the, um, like both of us, we're always doing the day-to-day -day stuff when we can't, we're trying to do the big picture stuff and we haven't been able to pull back to really do a lot of the big picture stuff. So we're hoping with getting the staff on board um, and getting in place and uh, with the alignment, the new alignment, we'll be able to start really focusing on the big picture and future planning for the recreation division and the library division. So the, the new alignment is gonna help us get, get there. But again, the hiring is what's taking the longest to do. Um, I know both me and Nick were really disappointed this fall when we thought we were close to getting somebody and then the hiring process just sort of ran to a complete halt and then we lost all the candidates. So um, I'm hoping this time we'll get it done. Um, and like you told them, we're, we're trying to get people hired before summer starts because Last time we were trying to hire before summer, we got them on board right after summer ended. So <laughs> we're trying to move faster and further. But it, it, every place that we've talked to, everybody's having trouble getting people to work. You, know, you hear about this on the news, but 
we have been dealing with this every time we, we put out recruitments. Um, I think even in public works, it's just trying to get viable candidates to apply for jobs has been really difficult. Um, but we're hoping, to, right now we have six, so fingers crossed that we can get somebody good who will work with us. But um, we're hoping to get these things in place so we can really start moving forward. And we also just keep hoping that the COVID will sort of go away. We can actually start getting back to the, the business because we have, we had things planned that we wanted to do, but we just have had to sit and wait. So, but there's a lot of stuff that we're getting on board, but we also have a lot of vacancies in the city um, that we need to have filled that will help us out. Because um, Drew, who used to help us out a lot, um, left to another city. Um, mm -hmm. So it left us even more shorthanded and short staffed than we were before. So we're, we're slowly moving forward, but hopefully by the summertime, um, we'll have most of our stuff back in place and we can start looking forward to a different, hopefully a brighter, brighter next year. But we were saying this last year too, huh, Nick? So we, we, we keep getting these roadblocks that we're not expecting and um, it's driving us crazy because we really would like to get back to, and I know the community really wants to get back together and to do things together again. So um, I think having these new staff can come on board will really help us get there. But the, the new alignment will actually start to help me really look at the big picture and start to move these things forward too. So, um, but that's really all for right now. We'll, we'll start reworking our mid-year budget um, soon as well. Um, and so Nick will get his hands dirty with mid-year budget and the, we'll also start working on the new fiscal year budget as well. So okay. any questions or? Any questions? I do have one. Um, I'm just curious why people why people aren't um, applying. I mean, I keep reading it's COVID that people are are holding back from getting jobs. Is that what you're running into? Well, I, it's, it just depends on the industry. It's um, I know a lot of I've talked to like the dentist who works down the street when she was trying to get a dental technician. A lot of her technicians don't have childcare, and so without childcare, you can't go back to work. And if you have childcare issues, that's holding a lot of people yeah. back. Yeah. Um, and also being able to afford childcare, and if you can't get a good job to help pay for that, yeah. you know, you have that you have to balance that out as well. Um, but yeah, it's really we haven't gotten a real reason why. But I, the people I've talked to, it's usually the childcare issue that's one of the biggest barriers. But um, cost of living up here in the area is not helping. Um, people who have to commute, if you commute, you're paying bridge tolls, if you're coming from the south, or you're commuting to far away from the north. So okay. there's a lot of different things that are adding to our, you know, even the departments where we think people would be applying for, and even our community service assistant, it's a full-time benefited position. Yeah. And we're still shocked at the low amount of people applying for yeah. a job that has benefits. And that was something that, you, like a few years ago, people would be, we'd have 50 people to, to look through, but to only get six. And I think last time we only had five. So it's really a shocker for us. And I think that's happened for every department, even the police and fire, the, yeah. the pool of candidates is so tiny. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of shocking, so. Okay, thank you. I was, more information. Okay, any other questions for Franklin? No? Anybody have any? Now we move on, it seems to me to- The commissioner's reports, yeah. Commission, yeah. Any, any commissioner have something they want to say? This is a silent group tonight. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, I, I don't have much to say other than congratulations, Nick. Uh, I hope that's not just a title change and that you've gotten a tremendous bump in pay. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Great bump, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. Thank yeah, you guys. Yeah, good. Good. Well, well-deserved, that's for sure. Good. Um, anything else? No? Okay, this has been, well, it's not that long. Uh, thank you, everybody. We'll, we'll uh, see you another time, uh, whenever it is, the third Thursday in February. Yeah, so it'll be on, um, oh, I don't have the date. <laughs> it was at the end of the, um, the agenda, so let me see. So that will be February 17th. So February that'll be 17th. Valentine's Day. Okay, all right, we won't miss Valentine's for it. Um, okay, um, let's see. Allison, do we have to do anything special to leave? No, you may just adjourn, no roll call needed. Okay, thank you very much for, you're just wonderful. You're keeping, keeping us straight every time. Anybody else have anything or should we just say goodnight? 
I just want to say thank you, Chair Blauvelt, for a fine yes. year. Thank, thank you. you. That's Outstanding. Right. It's been, it's for been sure. uh, <laughs> tremendous leadership on your part. Thank you. It was, you're a, such a nice group to work with. So I think that's what does it all. Okay. See you next month. Bye-bye, everybody. everybody. Thank you. Thank you.